What do you think is special about the flame on this cook stove? It's fueled by biogas from the anaerobic digestion of fecal sludge. Following this module, you will be able to discuss methane potential of fecal sludge, understand concerns with centralized treatment, and have a design overview of digesters. This module focuses on possible applications of anaerobic digestion of fecal sludge. It does not go into depth on types of technologies, other types of anaerobic treatment, or the fundamental science, as that has been covered thoroughly in many other publications. If you would like to learn more about this topic, I would recommend starting with the anaerobic digestion modules in the third week of the Sondek MOOC on Municipal Solid Waste, this Sondek publication on anaerobic digestion, and basic engineering textbooks on wastewater treatment. There has not been a lot of research or implementation of the anaerobic digestion of fecal sludge compared to other more well-established technologies. So what are the possibilities? Let's start with methane potential, the amount of methane produced per gram of COD, which will depend on the level of stabilization of the sludge. So what does this mean for fecal sludge? Well, we cannot say conclusively because there are not a lot of results for methane potential of different types of fecal sludge. But intuitively, one would guess that fresh sludge with very short retention times in containment, like many public toilets or restaurants, would have higher methane potential than sludge that has been sitting in a septic tank for 10 years undergoing digestion. These preliminary results from researchers at Cranfield University show the results of biomethane potential from 11 pit latrines, two public toilets, and 10 portable or container-based toilets compared to primary wastewater sludge. They seem to indicate that our intuition is correct, but based on that, we also would have predicted that public ablution blocks would have had higher methane potential. This highlights a need for further research and also more results to confirm whether results are due to factors such as the seed that was used for the tests. This graph shows the variability of methane potential just from the pit latrine samples used in the study. This is also not surprising since we know that fecal sludge is highly variable. It also illustrates the need for further research if we are to better understand the methane potential of fecal sludge. So what does this mean for the anaerobic digestion of fecal sludge? I'm going to make a division of three levels of implementation based on the scale, the degree of centralization, the required management level, and operational skill. A high level for all of these categories is centralized like digesters that are commonly found at large, centralized wastewater treatment plants for the digestion of wastewater sludge. Medium is community scale, reactors that are not fully optimized for operational parameters and treatment performance, so require less operation and capacity. And low are household level systems that are seen in rural areas, which are small passive systems mainly treating manure and food waste with some co-treatment of fecal sludge. There are millions of implementations in India and China with mixed results when applied in other areas. I'm not going to cover household examples in this module as it is not relevant for our focus on dense urban areas. So what about the possibility of operating large centralized anaerobic digesters for fecal sludge? Well, it hasn't been done before. But to evaluate the feasibility, one of the first questions is, would there be enough methane potential? These are some basic considerations for designing an anaerobic digester. First, you'll know the temperature of the ambient air. Then you have your reactor. And you know the temperature you want to operate the reactor at, for example, mesophilic. You can also then select your solids retention time based on your treatment objectives. You know your loadings, what's going to be coming into the reactor, the total solids concentration and mass loading of the sludge. You also know the degradability of the sludge. Based on this, 
then you can calculate the reactor volume and you can also calculate the amount of biogas that will be produced including the methane concentrations. You can then evaluate whether or not the methane that's produced is going to be adequate to generate heat to bring the reactor up to the necessary operating temperature. The problem is we don't, with fecal sludge, have reliable data for the degradability. The temperature is critical as it affects the growth of methanogenic bacteria. At lower operating temperatures, you need much longer retention times or they cannot grow in the reactor. They will be washed out and you will not get treatment. Primary wastewater sludge is around 75 to 85 percent degradable and secondary sludge around 70 to 80 percent. If the sludge is not degradable enough, there will not be enough methane production to heat the reactor. This is even more of a concern if you want to operate at thermophilic temperatures for pathogen reduction. Required temperatures and SRTs for digestion of fecal sludge are questions that need further research. An additional problem that is just as difficult is that anaerobic digestion is easily upset. And as we know, fecal sludge is highly variable. What are things that can upset a reactor? Toxics like nickel or zinc, phenolic compounds, or even high concentrations of free ammonia, pH, a buildup of volatile fatty acids, fats, oils, and grease, and shock loadings resulting in a rapid change of the digester contents. If a large-scale centralized reactor is upset, it is a management nightmare. Potentially what all of this means for the anaerobic digestion of fecal sludge at the centralized scale is that it could only be applied with co-digestion with other organic waste streams that are more degradable. And in small concentrations relative to the other organics to dampen the variability of fecal sludge going into a reactor. Examples could be brewery waste, spent grain, market waste, or even wastewater sludge. Community scale digesters are easier to operate because they are not optimized for space, temperature, gas production, or treatment capacity, but provide an option that is potentially better than septic tanks or other types of anaerobic treatment as they're designed to capture biogas for resource recovery and reduce greenhouse emissions. CDD and Borda have implemented community scale systems in India, Nepal, and Tanzania. There are not yet enough operational results for detailed design recommendations, but they have been sized up to a maximum of a 6 meter diameter based on solids concentrations, collection capacity and frequency of emptiers, solids and hydraulic retention times, and requirements for effluent and solids treatment. This is the schematic for an anaerobic digester built and operated by Borda in the Mlalakua area of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. The capacity of the plant was based on estimations from operating a similar reactor in the Kigamboni neighborhood with the collection and transport of fecal sludge for the community as shown here. The size of the digester was also based on the available land area and the desired complexity of operation so that it could operate at a community scale. The resulting design capacity is 5 cubic meters a day, or what is thought to be 20,000 population equivalents. This is the access road. First, there's 30 square meters for a receiving station for the trucks to discharge. Then there's another 5 square meters for the screening of the sludge. The dome is constructed to be 50 cubic meters, with the expansion chamber another 21 cubic meters. The liquid from the reactor then goes to an anaerobic filter. The sludge goes here to drying beds, which take up another 55 square meters. And then the liquid from the drying beds and the anaerobic filters goes here to a banana plantation, which takes up another 170 square meters.
Here are some pictures of what it looks like. The gate coming into the facility, the receiving bay, bar screen, cover of the dome and expansion chamber, the covered drying beds, and the banana plantation. For more information, please refer to the CDD and Bordo websites and this biogas curriculum, a tool for trainers to train masons and technicians on the complexities of the gas-tight construction of digesters. In summary, benefits of anaerobic digestion include reduced sludge and required footprint compared to aerobic treatment, produces methane and sludge for resource recovery, it can destroy pathogens depending on the operating conditions, and drawbacks include that the process is easily upset, it operates best at controlled and consistent conditions, and it requires knowledge and skill for operation. In this module, we learned about the methane potential of fecal sludge and the design and operating concerns with centralized and decentralized treatment. Thanks for joining. See you next time.